Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Yes, we have the turbo. So we're going to flip the turbo. We're going to fit the intercooler and the exhaust and put everything back and let's see if it runs. Sorted. Now, only a couple of seconds for you, a couple of days for me, but as you can see, we have a nice new shiny turbo. And look, the shaft is in one piece. Now, there is a tiny, tiny bit of play, but that is normal. It's a lot less than my finger show in there. Um, once the oil goes into it, it kind of makes that play up. I took the, well, I've, I've, we've got a new gasket and I just took the two bolts to put the bottom oil feed return away. This is the oil feed and I've also put on this little thing here. So very, very simple. Turbo is now ready to go in, but what is very, very important, you put in a new turbo in, you have to make sure of a few things. You have to put brand new oil in, brand new filter. That just goes without saying. The other thing you want to check is when you take off your um, oil cap, if there's a load of little bits that looks like sugar and lumps, that means the oil hasn't been changed regularly in the car. And that could have been one of the reasons for the turbo to blow. Now, I don't think we had that problem with this particular turbo because we was getting oil everywhere. But with that little gauze I showed you, when they block up, the turbo starves of oil and it seizes. So if your oil hasn't been changed regularly, it's all gloopy and got lumps in it, you have to just because otherwise you're going to just going to destroy your new turbo if you've got that um you're going to have to get that sorted out first we're lucky enough we don't have anything like that now we are going to put new oil in that goes without saying but like i said i don't think we had an oil problem as regards lack of oil in that sense our gauze wasn't blocked and the oil even though it's black but the oil looks kind of good in that sense and there's no sign of any kind of bad oil but what I do need to do is now fit this. Now, because we took the exhaust off, it does make it a hell of a lot easier to get these two bottom bolts on, which is a good thing. Now, we need to make sure our turbo is nice and clean here, and our surface is nice and clean here too, because it's metal on metal fitment. So we've got a metal on metal fitment. And like I did say, with this oil pipe, make sure you haven't tightened the bottom of it, which you can't quite see where my hand is, because we're gonna have to move this depending on where the turbo sits. So you need to make sure you haven't tightened that fully because if you try and push this, what you could do is you could end up breaking this pipe, putting too much pressure on this pipe because it can't move at the bottom. And another thing to do now why it's best is the oil return pipe here. If you can put that on the turbo, oh, if you can put that on the turbo here, as you're pushing it down, it will just make your life a lot easier. It's not that important, but believe me, it makes your life a lot easier. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lube in there just to help me do that first, and then I'm gonna bang the old turbo on. Right, so I've lubed up the pipe, and hopefully, I might, not, I might be getting in the way of the camera. Let's bring it around here a bit. I might be able to see a bit better. And I'm just gonna put the turnpipe on first. because that will just make my life easier. And then make sure your feed pipe is kind of in the right kind of place. Don't fit it, you just need to make sure it's feeded in the right place. And now we can just literally fit the turbo. And what I mean by that is, as you can see, that feeder pipe is there. If it's around here, you struggle to move it back inside to where the turbo should be. Now, we have the turbo on, we have the return pipe on, not tight, nothing is tight yet, but these bolts now at the bottom, which you, I'm not gonna be able to show you, but believe me, they are a million times easier to get to now than they were with the exhaust on. So we had to take the exhaust off anyway to get that gauze out. And if you're not sure what I mean by the gauze, if you watch the first video, you'll see what I mean when I took the gauze out. And I can only suggest if you've got one of these cars with that gauze in, you just bite the bullet, strip the car, take out that gauze, because believe me, that can be the number one problems of these turbos popping. And it can cause, cost you an absolute arm and a leg 
Might take you a day or so to strip it, but I'd rather have a day or so time stripping the car than spending hundreds of pounds on a new turbo. Now, them 11 mil bolts are on, all four of them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten them. Again, no point me tightening them on film because again, I can't, you can't see them and they're in an awkward place. And I'm just gonna tighten down this return pipe here with the Jubilee clip. Then I'll turn the camera back on and uh, we'll continue. Now what I've done is I've tightened up the pipe along this side. Let's see if you can see it down there. I've also put on the little vacuum pipe for the actuator, it just pushes on. And I've put on the E10 bolt that comes on this side, which is just there for like the turbo dampener. Now I'm ready to put on the oil feed pipe. Now you have to be very careful because you essentially have a metal pipe which is hollow, which can easily get bent, distorted out of the way, and also can easily be broken. And then you've two uh, banjo bolts. And what a banjo bolt is, as you can see, there's a big hole in the middle and there's a hole straight through it, and that allows the oil to go through. Now on a banjo bolt, you'll have two copper washers. And these are very, very important. One goes on one end, on one side of the um, hole and the other goes there. So essentially it goes like that and the banjo is in the middle. Um, and they work very well, but you can easily over tighten them and break them. So what I like to do, <clears throat> I've got the bottom bolt loose. So this pipe is completely loose. This bottom bolt, which you can't see on there is completely loose. So what I'm gonna do is put the banjo bolt on, get the copper washer on too, which can be the most fiddliest part. Sometimes it might be best just to leave the copper washer on top. So I'm screwing this in by hand, making sure it sits flush, which it does. I now know and centering it to make sure it's in the center. Also follow the pipe all the way down, make sure it's not hitting against anything because the vibrations, if it's rubbing against something, could take two weeks, could take six months, but it's gonna form a hole in it and then that can lead to more problems. And believe me, you don't want to be taking this pipe out because it is obviously very awkward to get to. Now I'm just tightening the other one by hand as well. So I'm just going to double check to make sure this pipe isn't rubbing against anything, which it isn't. Now I can tighten up, which is a 10 mil Allen key. And like I said, you have to be careful. I'm using a long 3 8 ratchet, which is too long for this job, really, but I'm used to them, so you just have to... Now. That's it. That is essentially kind of the turbo on now. So, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to have to get it up in the air because I want to put the exhaust back on. Kind of fit it on the bottom and let it fit to the back of the turbo here. So that's going to be the next job. Now, if you watch the first part of this video, you'll notice that this bracket that holds the exhaust on, we had a couple of bolts missing. We had one bolt in the bracket missing and one bolt in the exhaust missing. So we're going to replace them this time. But the easiest way to do this, oh, and also you can see where my finger is right there. That's the banjo bolt for the uh, oil feed pipe right next to the oil filter there. So that's right behind the exhaust. There's no way of getting to that without taking the exhaust off. Um, another thing I have done is I've squirted all brake cleaner down here to clean all the oil off. So when we start the engine, if there's any leaks, we can see if it's leaking. And hopefully it's not leaking from there because that means we have to take everything back off. But it's a good thing to do is clean it just so you know if you've got any oil or new oil dripping. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed up the exhaust um, and then the bracket, I'm going to put the bracket on second. I'll try and do this as I'm filming, but I might not be able to. Be careful of all the heat shields, because everything can get in the way. I hope I can get this kind of up easy enough. Now that's kind of in some sort of place as such. Now it's just wedged there. 
So what I'm going to have to do is just get a couple of the bolts in here for the actual exhaust so it doesn't move. And we also have to remember to put the gasket back on because otherwise we'll be leaking. top of that bracket. The exhaust isn't in the right place which is making my life a bit tricky. This is just going to kind of hold it for me a little bit and then I can connect to the exhaust on the top before I do any tightening of the bolts. Right I'm just struggling uh, to get this properly so now it's kind of more or less held in there I'm just going to clamp it to the turbo on the top and that'll just make my life easier. So let's get back to the top of it. Right, so let's get this uh, exhaust connected up to here, which will then hopefully... Now, I don't know if you can see... Oh, you can't, the heat shield's in the way. Right, you can't really see here, but I'm just putting the exhaust back onto the end of the turbo. It's just, they just slot together. It's nothing particularly special. Um, now the exhaust is twisted on me, which is a nightmare. Um, untwist itself. It's not going to. You bastard. Right, what I've done is I've just put a, a, a jack underneath the exhaust. And I put it at the end, so it's twisted it back for me. It's just going to make my life a lot easier. But even that there now isn't great, but it's going to help. Now, with this exhaust clamp, you can just kind of see it. On the first part of the video, I showed you the special tool to actually open it. Um, so if you watch the first part, if you haven't seen it, you'll, you'll see the reason why I'm actually using these and not trying to uh, wedge it with anything else. So just squeeze them together, opens it out, push them in. And that now has closed the exhaust back or the bracket back no damage get a special bolt with like a kind of a lock washer and the nut for it I'm not going to tighten this properly this is just going to be enough to, to hold the exhaust in for me without it slipping again and then I can lift it back up and kind of finish off underneath there properly without trying to fight the exhaust all the way so it's a 16 mil, and like I said, I'm not tightening it properly. Just enough so it can't come loose, but it can still move. That's the key. I still need the exhaust to be able to be moved, because it might not be in the right place. As you can see, that bracket is really loose, but the exhaust can't really come out there now, but it can still twist on it, which is important. So now we need to get back to the bottom again. Now, what I need to do is, I need to get this bracket kind of up there. So I'm gonna to have to disconnect the back of this exhaust again, which is just as well I didn't tighten it fully. That will allow me to kick the bottom of the DPF filter out to hopefully slide that through. Um, I should have really slided it through at the same time as the uh, DPF, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, I can move that quite a lot. So that will now enable me to get this. You just need to make sure you get it the right way. You don't do it upside down. So I need that over here. Hopefully this is coming through. I'm not getting away the camera again as I normally do. This is as close as I can get you in. But now we are, we have that bracket on, which is a good thing. So now what I need to do is, I need to put the two bolts back. Well, there was one bolt missing, so I'm going to replace it. Two 13 mil bolts, but there's no way I'm going to be able to record this. So once I got them two 13 mil bolts on, I will then turn the camera back in. We'll get the two bolts to hold the, the DPF onto the bracket and then the two bolts for the exhaust. And then it's just all the wires and the lines after that for, for the DPF as well. But they're, they're simple enough, they're really easy to do. Now, a quick handy tip 
I need to get this bolt in, but obviously every time I turn it sideways, as you can see, the bolt comes out. I can't get my fingers in, so I can't hold it and then screw it. So it keeps falling off, which is really annoying. Now this happens a lot when you're working on cars. So the easiest thing to do is get some tape, just a normal electrician's tape, tape it onto the socket and just hitting the washer of the actual bolt. So as you can see, you can go over a tiny little bit, it's not a problem. And now what will happen is, as you can see that won't fall off, I can then guide this in and because it's only tape, once you get it in a few threads you can just pull it out, the tape will break and that's there and it won't fall off. Sorted. Right, so I've got the two bolts in the bracket but the exhaust as you can see is still really loose. So what I need to do is I need to bolt the exhaust to the rest of the exhaust and also then bolt um, the exhaust to the bracket I've just put on but I don't, I've tightened the bracket but I'm not going to tighten anything else yet, I want to make sure it lines up. So what I need to do is I need to get this lining up now, just put the bolts in loosely, then see if the bolts line up to the bracket and then I can tighten everything. Because if I tighten these exhaust bolts here fully, I might need to move the DPF slightly to kind of get it all to line up. So I don't want to tighten anything fully until I've got everything and I'm sure everything will fit. Now these are just going to be hand tight. And I'm looking at the exhaust bolts now, or the GPF filter, should I say, and lucky enough, they're both lining up perfect. I can't show them, they're just two 10mm bolts, that's all they are. If you're doing this, you'll clearly see where the bolts are. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tighten them two 10mm bolts up, tighten, I think these are 16 or 17, I'm going to tighten both of them up, then I'm just going to put these wires to the top, and then we'll connect everything else. So once I tighten these three bolts, or oh, I also need to tighten this, now, as it turns off, I, turns out I didn't need to take this off. So I'm just going to tighten that one up as well. Uh, once I've done that, we'll get back to the top and uh, see, because like I said, there's no point in me showing you tighten up bolts because it's just boring. And then we'll get to the rest of it. Sweet. Now we're back to the top. I've tightened all the exhaust bolts on the bottom. I've tightened this exhaust bolt here, so the manifold turbo exhaust bolts. Um, so all the turbo side of things now are all tight. Now the DPF filter here, we've got a little connection here for one of the sensors. So I just disconnected that because it was easier than trying to take the sensor out. So we'll just clip that back, push this little red clip down so we can't unclip itself. So that's now good. We need to go to the far side here. And what we've got in here is a couple of other little pipes with a sensor on it. So again, we need to connect the sensor first, which doesn't really matter what you do first to be fair. Um, push this pipe on it, push that together, I just took it off this way because it was just easier, we'll just slide the little clip in place, there we go, and all we have here is A little clip pushes in and a little T15 torque to actually screw that back in with. Now, it was a T25 in the end, not a T15. These two uh, pipes go down to the two little uh, pipes on the DPF filter, very straightforward. So that's all in. We've clipped the, the sensor in the far side. This sensor's clipped in as well, so that's all good. Um, what we've basically got left to do now is connect all the plastic pipes for the intercoolers and stuff on the top put on intercooler, new oil, new filter which is down here in a really stupid position and uh, yeah that's it so the next thing I'm going to do is bang on these pipes at the top. Now again I've had these pipes upside down so all the oil and everything's going to be drained out of them because it is important to do that and again what also you can do is just uh, put a little bit of brake fluid down it. Brake fluid is fantastic it cleans everything. Now on this we have a little rubber seal or a little o-ring should I say so we need to push the o-ring in first make sure the o-ring goes in flat and then just turn it and that then locks into that tab we've got here and as you can see 
once we put our 8mm nut and bolt back here, that's it, simple as that. But before we do that, we need to put this little pipe in here. So I'm just going to put this little, well actually, thinking about it, before I put that on, I'm going to have to put the second part of the heat shield on. We have the heat shield here. So as you can see, this got a bit bent, not a big deal. Just need to line everything up. I put the two bolts in there first, the top. And if you remember, one of them was this fella, which had a rubber on to get the, especially this bolt, needs to go in the right position first. The thing is, I would like to leave these off just to test it, to make sure there's no leaks or anything, but uh, it just means doing a lot more stripping and it's all plastic pipe so we don't want to burn it. So we can just kind of bend this back into shape. It's going to take just a little bit of bending, it's going to be a bit fiddly but not the end of the world. It's just one of them things that happens when you uh, move things in and out. So what I'm gonna do is, as soon as I've kind of fought with these, bent them back, put two bolts there, I'm gonna tighten all this down. So we've got one, two, three, four, five bolts. Tighten that down, then I'll turn the camera back on and we're ready to put the kind of the plasticky pipes back on. I've got that on, it was a bit harder than I thought, obviously, as I've been moving in and out, it's obviously got twisted and stuff, but it's on, it's nice and solid. It's not the end of the world. Now. We need to put this on first, so put the little hose on the plastic end first, just make your life easier. So like I said, line up the little o-ring, make sure it's in nice and flat. Once it's in flat, twist it, and as you're twisting it, you're actually locking it on this mechanism. We also need to feed this in at the same time. So we need to get that lined up and in. Make sure that's on all the way around. It doesn't want to go down, so I'll maybe try and put that on there first. I'm going to try it on this end first, kind of squeeze that down, and maybe try and line this up. Ah, there we go. See? See? Sorted. Now I just need to move this around a bit so I can get to both. There we go. Tighten up these two Jupiter clips. I'm going to use this palm ratchet because these palm ratchets are fantastic because you can't put a lot of pressure on them so you can't really over tighten anything really because it's just a palm ratchet but they are brilliant check it make sure it's in proper let's put the bolt in there bolt in to hold that properly in place get the little spanner on it be careful because you're screwing into plastic even though there is a metal kind of housing in the plastic but you still need to be careful now that's on it's looking more like a car now what i've done with every single one of these pipes i've taken off i don't know if you can see how clean that is down there i've left them standing upright so the oil can drain out but i've also squirted brake cleaner same with all the man with all the intake and absolutely everything cleaned as much stuff out as possible the, these these long pipes here I've just let them drip and I've squirted the um, brake cleaner down them so they've all been kind of drip drying overnight uh, it's the easiest and best way now this is just very simple just hooks on to both of them struggling to get pipes on a little bit of WD or a little bit of lube will actually put these back so what we're gonna actually do we're gonna get Sean to tighten these he's gonna use The little palm ratchet, and he's going to tighten both of these for me. Let's put your hand here where mine is, and spin that. Spin the top. No, other way. Yeah, that's it. Spin it back. Now keep your hand on it. Like this. There you go. Easy, isn't it? Easy peasy. Just do that one as well for me. Right, same thing again, left it standing up, cleaned it out with brake fluid. So what we're going to do is just shove it on. Make 
sure it's nice and straight. This just clips in these little ears here. There's a little O-ring. Someone's been at this. The O-ring isn't great. Let's make sure it's definitely going in. It has there now. Now, we need to tighten these two again to get Sean to uh, tighten these for me. Perfect. Sorted. Now, we're more or less all kind of back together. I've still got to do the... Um, oh, I didn't film. I didn't film putting the oil filter on because the oil filter is behind here. <laughs> I knew I should have done that. Uh, I got carried away and I put the new oil filter in because you have to take this off to put the oil filter in. So the oil filter is in, it's just in a, it's, well, it's in a stupid place, it's just be here. Um, what I'm going to do next is put the intercooler on, then we'll change the air filter and change the oil and then we're ready to uh, start this baby up, see what happens. Now when you watch the first part of this video, you'll see when we was trying to take the intercooler off, the little clip here, well on the far side, the nut was completely rusted. We had to drill the head off it. And this is the old clip with the rusty bolt in. So I'm just going to chuck that away. I've got another clip here, which I'm just going to slide on. So basically, just slide it on. So as you can see, I've just slid it on. I can put a new bolt up there, sorted. It saves so much work trying to drill it out. Just took the head off it, throw away the clip, get a new clip, simple as. So this kind of makes this a lot easier to put back um, in that sense. So first off we need to do is put the pipe inside the hole, get it lined up correctly, which can be sometimes quite tricky. Again, get it in the right place. And then hook it on the two hooks, what's on the radiator, bring it down, bump it around there. But I can hopefully get this pipe on it first, which will save a bit of mess, which I've managed to do. So that was pretty lucky. So I managed to not only clip that side in, I managed to get the pipe in at the same time. Get that in now, that's sitting quite nicely. I need the jubilee clip for this pipe just here. Now slide that pipe on. Ah. So that's that pipe on, the far pipe, two jubilee clips, I've got a tighten, two bolts for the intercooler, and that's it. Again, that point me showing you tightening them. I'll get Sean to tighten them for me. Once we've done that, we'll turn the camera back on, change the oil. Right, so we've tightened the two bolts for the intercooler and we've tightened the two Jubilee clips for the intercooler pipes and that's now on. Um, very simple, very straightforward. What we're gonna do now is change the oil, or should I say, Sean is. But we're gonna see if he's gonna get covered in oil. He did it before and he didn't. Now this one's slightly different because it's right underneath. So this one's a bit trickier. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna crack it for him. And now, that's very tight. It shouldn't be that tight. Well, now I'm gonna leave it up to him and let's see what happens. Good luck. Don't do it all the way because you will get covered if you do it all the way like that. So when you're feeling it, kind of getting loose, see if you can do it with your hands. Now, I shouldn't really be doing this, he's always got his school uniform on, so I'm going to get into grief if he gets oil everywhere. Oh, oh, is it getting loose? Very. What do we think? Do you think he's there covered or is he going to be fine? Nope. <laughs> right, maybe try with your hands now. So just kind of like spin it off and move your hand out of the way quickly. Oh, oh, oh. One, two, 
Hey. Well, hey, you didn't get covered. My finger did. Uh, just a little bit. That, I clapped that as, as good. Yeah, you did it without getting covered. Well done. I could have done better though, but it's just me. No, he couldn't. <laughs> as we can see, that oil is very black. But to be fair, it's not. It doesn't. The as it's coming out, it doesn't look really bad as regards of what some oil can look like. So that's a good sign. So that means we haven't got all kind of lumps and bumps in it. The problem is if you've got all kind of, if, you, if, your, oil, if your engine oil hasn't been changed in a while and you get all these lumps in and around your engine, if you flush your engine, I, I personally don't use engine flush. I think it's very bad. The reason is if your engine's really bad as regards all gritty kind of oil and lumps everywhere, you flush it with engine flush, and especially if it's all at the top of the head, well, that all them bits have to try and get down. And if all them bits come down together, well, then you could block up all the vents where the oil goes up to. So you could actually cause more damage than anything. What I suggest is if you have got a load, or if someone hasn't looked after the car before you've got it, is to get really good quality oil and to change it every 3,000 miles. Just your oil and filter. I know that would be kind of expensive, but I guarantee you, after you know maybe 10,000 or so miles, you will have a lot of that crap that's naturally come down from your engine. It hasn't come down at once, and you can remove it a lot easier. So I'm just going to wait for this to completely drain, and then uh, we'll turn the camera back on when we're pouring the oil in. Sorted. Sorted. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I did forget to film doing the oil filter. But it's not a big deal. We have one, two, three, four, five. T20s to take off the air filter. Now I haven't got an air filter yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this off and kind of take the air filter out. I'm getting one tomorrow, but it'll be good enough for me to start this to see what it's like. So Sean's going to take that off for me. And as Sean is doing that, I'm going to put three and a half litres of oil in. The oil I'm putting in this is Ford spec, it's Castrol. Um, and like I said, honestly, it's vitally important you put the right spec of oil in. Um, I'm going to put three and a half litres in first. And then we're going to start it, let the oil filter pull up, see what it sounds like and kind of go from there. Now this should be enough for me to start it regardless. So to make sure the turbo sounds okay. As we can see, I might put another, well I'd say another litre to be fair, we'll do it because um, we've got to fill up, fill up the oil filter. So another litre should do that for me. Which it has, and as we can see, just as I expected, thought we have oil in there from the actual turbo going what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this like that um, until I get a filter tomorrow but at least it means I can start this now and see what it sounds like now for the first second or so don't worry about if it sounds a bit weird because obviously this is a new turbo but if it doesn't really sort itself out after a couple of seconds turn it off make sure everything is fine because otherwise you're going to have a problem. And again, don't worry about if there's still a bit of kind of blue smoke or that coming out the back because you're not going to be able to get all the oil out of the exhaust and absolutely everything. So it still might kind of burn for half an hour to an hour or so after you fitted the new turbo. But if it keeps burning after a few days, then you know, you want to check it out again because you could have other problems. So let's start, let's see what it sounds like. There's no rattling, there's no kind of scraping noise. 
You do not want to rev this. Don't even attempt to rev it or even drive it. Let this heat up first to full temperature before you even consider driving it. What that will allow it to do is get plenty of oil inside the turbo. We can also double check to make sure nothing is leaking and that everything sounds fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this heat up properly and uh, fingers crossed, let's hope nothing's leaking or loose or anything like that. And once I've done that, turn the camera back on and uh, wrap up this video. Now, before anyone says, yes, where's Wally? I'll get it over and done with. Here's Wally. Anyway, normally after I do a job like this, I don't get to keep the car for very long. Normally the day after, they, the customer needs the car back and they're off with it. Obviously with a job like this, the best thing to do is kind of monitor the car for as long as possible before I give it back. Lucky enough with this particular car, he was away and I had it for about a week. So I've done an awful lot of driving with it. Anytime I needed to drive, I've used this just to make sure we've got no problems. All the covers underneath, I've left the covers off and everything, so if there is any oil leak or anything happening, I can tell straight away, because that's a good thing. Once you've done a job like this, you do not want to be leaving all the covers on the bottom and do all that, because you can be giving yourself problems. Oil leaks you might not see straight away. So we've got the turbo, we've no oil anywhere, we've no funny noises, we've no nothing coming out. The car has done exactly what it's supposed to do. So I'd be very, very confident in saying we're not going to have an issue. Now he's got a long drive with it back. So I'm not going to put any covers on because he's got like a three hour drive ahead of him. So um, I want to make sure there's no covers on. So when he gets back home or even halfway through his journey, he can just have a quick look to make sure everything is fine. So that really is it. That's, that's it now done. So that's how to fit the turbo on one of these. And it's pretty much the same on most cars. Uh, a few little different things. Some might be harder or easier just depend on your car so look hope it helps thumbs up and subscribe don't forget check out our shop check out our forum sign up to it on all that and most importantly get your hands dirty see you for the next one